I have known uh, Zachary Zeus, uh, CEO of uh, Biscube for a number of years now. He has been very helpful in terms of delivering a guest lecture in the data analytics course that I teach the postgraduate level at the University of Sydney. This lecture is usually discussing some of the real world implementations of big analytics type projects and some of the impl implementation concerns that arise in these projects. And this has been very helpful both for me and for my class. And so it's really, uh, delight I'm delighted to have you here to talk to you. I was just wondering if you could talk to us about some of the issues that you're dealing with in terms of the real world projects, especially in the context of the work you do with Itachi with the Pentacle project. Well, thank you very much for having me. And, and first of all, uh, giving a guest lecture each year is something that I look forward to. and. Uh, I, I enjoy uh, having the opportunity to, to chat with your students and get some insight into some of the perspectives coming up from um, uh, the, the academic side of, 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 uh, of school. Um, and uh, so in terms of the work that we're doing with in analytics and with Hitachi, um, one of the things that we're really focused on is uh, what we call sort of data engineering. And so data science became a big thing in 2012 when HBR said it was going to be the sexiest job of the 21st century. Uh, I had a slightly different opinion at the time, I still do, uh, but uh, we really focus on how we help organizations make analytics a part of their organizational and operational mm -hmm. capability and capacity, mm -hmm. as opposed to a single point solution that might exist in a data science team or with a group of data scientists. Now so that's really the implementation issues, how when you take it to the real world, how does the whole analytics thing? That's right, and, and, and one of the things that we say uh, is that uh, unless people make a different decision as a result of the work we do, um, we haven't really done anything. Mm -hmm. and if we're just sort of putting numbers up or putting reports out, mm -hmm. if it doesn't actually help the organization mm -hmm. move in a different direction, doesn't help a person um, deliver something of higher value to their customers mm -hmm. or improve the operational efficiency of the organization, we're not really achieving anything. Mm -hmm. And that's really sort of where the the information and the analytics hit the real world mm -hmm. and that's that's a core focus for us and mm -hmm. we, we spend a lot of time focused on that with our customers and, and hopefully uh, that comes across in, in the presentation I give to the class. That's right, yeah, yeah, so the challenge for a lot of people is to go from data to knowledge but the important uh, link from knowledge to action, implementation, decisions and so on. So one of the things that I focus on the course is the latter part and yeah. So I'm glad you're touching on that in your presentations and also in your work in the company when you focus on engineering, you kind of take a holistic view of the whole uh, connection from data and all the challenges in terms of putting the data together and doing the analytics, but also extracting inferences and then the latter stage of really about taking those, validating them and then you know moving towards action and decisions and so on. Yeah, and, and, and what we, one of the things, one of the key insights that, that I think we help our customers see is that every uh, analytic outcome, every um, data process, every it, it goes through a life cycle. And, and the life cycle is actually something to pay a lot of attention to, which is you're going to have an idea, a business person or a, a person, member of the team is going to have an idea about a direction the business should go or some insights that might help op achieve a, a, an objective or a goal and they'll ask one of their analysts or one of their technology partners to help them with that insight. Mm -hmm. Well, does the data show this? Mm -hmm. And that'll be an ad hoc analysis. Mm -hmm. And then as that data becomes more and more relevant mm -hmm. to day-to-day -day achievement of that goal or objective or idea, mm -hmm. that analysis goes from ad, needs to go from ad hoc to automated. Mm -hmm. Automated, systematized. And systematized, and systematized mature. And, and we talk a lot about with our customers that sort of maturity mm -hmm. of analytics. Mm -hmm. Not as a overall maturity model. Uh, so, I mean, there are some maturity models around what's your organization's overall maturity model, but we actually look at individual processes, individual analytics, and ultimately individual decision making that we want to help people do uh, and talk about the life cycle of the information that supports that decision making and supports that knowledge. And, and, and that focus it gives us the ability to help organizations. Uh, traverse that uh, knowledge tier over time because uh, one of the things that I, I do like to say sometimes when I'm talking to executives for this first time, I said, imagine the day your business has 100% of its analytics completely done. You have every report you need, every analysis that you've ever wanted, it's all done 100% complete. 
what's going to happen the next day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the next day, the, the answer I like, you get is, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to have a different mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have new question, new mm -hmm. insights. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take, need to take my business in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I said, so that's going to happen forever. Mm -hmm. We're never done here. Mm -hmm. And so we, when we think about analytics and we think about decision making mm -hmm. and we think about data and information, what we really need to think about is what is the organizational capability required mm -hmm. to be on time with helping you make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And, and, and our, our company vision is to help people make better decisions these days. So we really focus on that as a core delivery of, mm -hmm. of capability to our clients and to our customers and mm -hmm. ultimately, hopefully to the students in the course. Yeah, um, students can definitely benefit from this because as I said before, it's not just doing some ad hoc uh, analysis and in our cloud we use OLAP tools and so on, but it's also going from there to as more you know, systematized process in companies, which is where the whole lecture comes in because it's very hard for us in the university to really get, you know, we don't really have a good understanding of the kind of organizational process that's needed to firm up and systematize this kind of analysis, which frees up time for more challenges, more problems and so on. But one thing I would like you to comment on is this, uh, Tie up that you have with Itachi, mm -hmm. and if you can talk about talk through how much it's really helping you in terms of building your capabilities and providing more comprehensive and more, I mean, more interesting kind of solution. Yeah, I, I, it's a, a good question. Uh, one of the things uh, somebody said to me the other day is uh, you can think of Hitachi because they're an industrial company that have been building mm -hmm. devices and power plants and air conditioners and. Um, is uh, somebody said they're a hundred billion dollar IOT company mm -hmm. and, and the analytics that, mm -hmm. that, that we do now help them with mm -hmm. is how they're bringing the, the, the mm -hmm. device analytics into mm -hmm. um, into the real world and into their customer mm -hmm. solutions and, and, and embedding those solutions much more holistically into the outcomes that customers are looking for. Mm -hmm. And so the kinds of things that we're doing with them is we're doing a whole lot in the agricultural space mm -hmm. with smart ag and mm -hmm. IOT devices on farms mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, there, there's just a, a whole raft of things that we're doing there. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing some things with universities, mm -hmm. not yet with Sydney, but uh, we'll, we'll get there, uh, mm -hmm. around uh, measuring the uh, on-campus experience. How do we uh, make the on-campus experience um, really premium because mm -hmm. the, when, when mm -hmm. students come on campus as opposed to going to online learning, mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for something bigger and deeper and more meaningful. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to help, we're helping uh, our universities measure that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and using IoT and using devices to sort of measure how people are moving through the campus and those types of things. Um, and those are the types of projects and the types of scale. And then the final one that, that's pretty exciting is uh, we're working with a power company to turn uh, their dumb power poles into a smart network mm -hmm. of uh, IoT connected devices mm -hmm. where we're going to put devices on the poles that measure uh, movement of the pole to mm -hmm. detect if the pole is going to fail soon, mm -hmm. early, or if it can mm -hmm. last longer. So we don't have to, so that the company doesn't have to replace the poles as often. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they're going to put weather sensors and uh, temperature sensors and heat sensors and smoke sensors mm -hmm. to detect if there are fires in the area mm -hmm. to detect to, to have a much wider monitor them remotely. And water, monitor remotely. We'll get real time alerts mm -hmm. uh, so if there's a fire out in the middle of nowhere the, there's a pole there we'll see it and we'll be able to send somebody early, to, early to prevent. yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. uh, a much more pervasive weather network mm -hmm. so Bu Bu uh, the Bureau of Meteorology only has so many weather sensors around mm -hmm. if we put one on every uh, power pole mm -hmm. your coverage of weather information becomes much mm -hmm. larger mm -hmm. all of those types of things are, are the types of projects we're getting involved mm -hmm. with with Hitachi. Yeah, all these projects, I mean, there's things on one side and there's analytics on the back side, back end, yep. which is where I guess the marriage between you and Hitachi and, and using Pentaho, a tool like Pentaho, would certainly help. And I'm sure that this you know, yeah, and, and gives you certain kinds of capabilities. Yeah, we, we talk about middle edge in mm -hmm. versus middle edge out. And, mm -hmm. and, and the middle edge is, is kind of just a way of describing everybody's talking about edge devices and mm -hmm. analytics on the edge and fog computing and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But really, the, the, what we're trying to help people think about is what what do you do out in the edge? Like what kind of analysis can you do um, on the device, near the device, that type of stuff? What, what needs to happen in real time versus what needs to happen operationally to help facilitate better decisions for the organization? And so we really focus on that middle edge in component where organizations might have tons of different devices they put out mm -hmm. in the mark, uh, out into the real world, mm -hmm. and incorporating them into their operational uh, workflows and their operations is actually where we focus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what's interesting about Hitachi is that with their Pentaho platform and their 
IT capabilities and their 50 years of having a, a technology providing company and 100 years of device creation and they're sort of sitting on both sides of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they describe that is they're a 100 year old operational technology company mm -hmm. and a 60 year old IT company and when you bring them together you get IoT and, mm -hmm. and that, that's kind of the um, kind of the marriage that they're Yeah, so they clearly have an advantage in terms of the kind of experience they have over the last the experience and the scale of projects that they can take on uh, a lot of the uh, IOT companies in the marketplace right now um, they're, they're small and they're startups and they're, they're constrained by the number of devices they can create in a given week uh, whereas a, a company like Hitachi and uh, can scale uh, the solution quite significantly with the amount of data that you're going to generate through these kinds of uh, implementations would you be also adding some kind of machine or you already have those kind of uh, oh, certainly, and, and, and actually um, Hitachi has quite a lot of capability oh, there yeah, too, exactly. and, and we have access, we do that, some of that work here, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have access mm -hmm. through you and then other folks around uh, academia to get uh, machine learning mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we view that as a input into a broader data engineering infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, uh, but particularly mm -hmm. on device and asset maintenance mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, where the, there's a very consistent, clean stream of data, that That's kind right. of predictives get real, pretty, mm -hmm. it's not easy, uh, but it becomes mm -hmm. uh, a, a pretty tractable problem. Mm -hmm. Where the data is quite a bit messier when you're talking about dealing with people, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. predictives can get quite a bit more challenging. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, I'm really delighted to see the directions your company is taking, and I wish you all the best. Joseph, thank you very much for having me, and uh, looking forward to uh, continuing the lecture. I hope so. And let's also work together on this using Pentaho for our students' training because in the past we found the suite of tools that you have probably gives our students a better opportunity to kind of pick up and develop the kind of skills that we need to have to join the future data science world out there. Perfect. Excellent. Happy to do it. Thanks.